Good evening and welcome to Chatroom. I've been lucky enough to do this show for a while now, but it still never ceases to amaze me the incredibly talented people we foster right here in Hawke's Bay. And my guest tonight is no exception to that. How did he go from Lipscomb Crescent in Havelock North to last year performing at Buckingham Palace? How did he get become mentored by Dame Kitty Takanoa, the one and only, and then get to perform with her? Let's find out. Philip Rhodes, welcome to Chat Room. Thank you. Now, to perform at Buckingham Palace, was that kind of a pinch yourself moment? Yeah, it was. And uh, not only for me, for, uh, you know, working alongside uh, current pop stars and, and Hollywood stars. Uh, I was chatting with a, with a guy I, I recognised as, I thought he'd been in the papers as uh, doing something uh, criminalistic. And I <laughs> thought, uh, I was chatting with him thinking, oh, I better not <laughs> associate with this guy too much. Ended up he plays a lot of bad guys in Hollywood films named Dominic West. Wow. And, uh, and I'd said to him, imagine this, uh, a little Māori boy from, from Hawke's Bay up here in Buckingham Palace singing in front of the Queen. And he said, well, imagine mm. me, a boy from Sheffield. So, yes. You know, so, so no, everyone w was delighted to be mm. there and, and uh, it was an, an amazing mm. sort of day and, and a mm. great uh, thing to celebrate. Because it was the Queen's um, 60th anniversary That's of her coronation, right. wasn't it? So That's it was right. in front of the Queen and I think 7,000 others. Yeah, well, it was a strange thing because the 60th mm. actually happened the year yes. before, but I mm. think they must have partied all year. Uh, <laughs> 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 but, uh, oh, the royals are known <laughs> for that, Philip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it must have been the hangover party. Probably, Maybe it was. But, uh, now, now, of course, you're back in New Zealand. You've been performing in Christchurch with New Zealand Opera, uh, probably the arguably most popular opera, La Boheme. Yeah. And what's also exciting about that, you played the role of Marcello, but again, your opposite was another Hawke's Bay born and bred yeah, opera yeah. singer, Madeleine yeah, Perard. You played Musetta. Very ha talented and lovely. Yeah. How did the show go? It was a, a, a success. Mm. And, um, you know, to, to take a show to, uh, to Christchurch, I haven't been back since the earthquakes mm. happened. And, uh, you know, it was uh, in a, a very sort of surreal thing to come back and see the devastation even years after, four years after, is so evident. Mm. Um, but uh, the amazing thing for me, even though we performed the show, was um, the steely resolve of, of the people that are living there and, and getting on with their lives. And, uh, you know, within the people that I met, you wouldn't think that they were struck mm. with great tragedy and loss only years ago. And it's also wonderful, too, that things like New Zealand Opera come and, and it gives them the opportunity to enjoy these sorts of things. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I hope that they expand that idea of, uh, you know, I know that they've taken over the company down there in, in uh, Christchurch, which is why they're, they're able to operate there. But I hope they continue to expand and perform, mm -hmm. you know, right around New Zealand, really, and, and take it into mm -hmm. every household. Yes, yeah, so this is what we were talking about um, before the cameras started rolling. You know, we get the Royal New Zealand Ballet here. We get the Symphony Orchestra here in Hawke's Bay. What about opera? Because they want to grow their audience, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. And it, it's such an expensive mm. um, medium opera. Cause, uh, you know, actually, it, it can't be much, that much more expensive than ballet. But, uh, you know, the opera company doesn't quite have the, uh, the uh, ability to hire singers mm. all year round like the ballet company does. And, um, you know, I'm sure that's, that's on the books with their, uh, their introduction of resident mm. artists. So mm. well, we just hope that they can work out and funding mm. can keep coming mm. in for them to do that. And um, with the likes of you and Madeleine Perard, Anna Perard, having all these links here in Hawke's Bay, I'm sure, you know, yeah, something well, could happen. Actually, the, mm. the uh, EIT course that mm. used to run here was a, a, a magnificent thing. You know, I started there. Another singer that was in the production, Wade Kurnow, studied here mm. in Hawke's Bay and lived here for, for sort of almost 10 years. And, uh, you know, Hawke's Bay has, can claim a lot of uh, very good singers out there now. Mm. Must be something in our water. Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay, so as we've talked about, you grew up in Lipscomb Crescent in Havelock North. You know, at times I wonder if you get awfully tired of talking about your early years, but reading about you and learning about you, I have to wonder if you would be the man you are today if you hadn't actually had some of that adversity yeah. in, in your early life. I've heard it described as almost a, a Jake the Muss first early years. Is that being too extreme? Uh, no. No, no, not really. Um, it was tough. It was, yeah, it was mm. a hard upbringing, and uh, uh, my father was was a lost man, really, mm. uh, and uh, he was abusive to himself through drugs, alcohol, mm. and, and um, that that translated in being abusive to my mother, to me, mm. um, and and to my sisters, and and the the shadowy world that goes with drugs mm. and alcohol of of welcoming uh, unsavoury mm. people into the home, and and uh, you know. 
being too drunk to keep an eye mm. on them. All, all those sorts of things uh, uh, were part of mm. part of my life as a, as a young child. Um, you know, if I had the opportunity, I would rather not go that sure. ag <laughs> go through sure. that again. Mm. But uh, I did, and in a wee way, it's helped me with with my career that I can I can say, well, nothing's been as bad as that, and you know, it's easy to confront situations that. Uh, and gives you the confidence to confront them too. Yeah, well, mm. you know. I've always known that I can take it or leave it, and um, you know, more than often when you when people understand that about you, they're they're less likely to be nasty. Mm. And um, I, I think uh, people are, are willing to welcome a bit of. And there's quite a lot of nastiness in 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 the in the operatic world or, or the theatrical world, really, where uh, people haven't dealt with their own issues. Mm. Um, when they come to meet someone that's been through through a bit and has a bit of confidence with their life, mm. you know, can tend to just chill mm. them out a bit. Mm. <laughs> and of course, at the age of nine, the wonderful Hanari mm. and Pam O'Keefe came into your lives and your five sisters' lives, and um, they fostered your whole family. Now, that in itself is wonderful that you stayed together. Yeah, well, it was mm. a difficult task. At first, we mm. were split up. Okay. But, uh, pa Pam and Hanari, mum and dad, mm. made it... Um, made it their mission to get the families together and uh, we were the first ones to to really experience that I guess and uh, social welfare in their in their infinite wisdom of the time were doing their best to always sort of pull us apart mm. and send us off here and there but but mum and dad sort of fought the system and and uh, proved to them it wasn't mm. right um, and I've got uh, five sisters out there now that are all wonderful mothers and uh, you know beautiful successful women mm. so so, you know, I'm grateful for, for them fighting for that, really. How did life change going to the O'Keeffe's? Oh, well, first of all, it becomes stable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I came from an environment where if I came home at 9 o'clock at night, no one, no one would notice. Uh, you know, and that's sort of at 7, 8 years old, you know, just roaming the streets. I came to uh, having rules and structure. And, um, and actually, I quite I, once I understood what that was about, I, I really enjoyed it and uh, even in my life now um, I need that uh, structure or else, uh, or else uh, I feel out of place. And uh, I read yeah. that Hanare said about you that you know when he met you you were this kind of little warrior you know sort of fighting your way yeah. and then basically just with love the shining jewel came out and yeah. I think that's a beautiful way of describing it actually. Yeah well I, I was uh, I'm nine years old trying to be a father mm. in all the wrong ways and the only way that I'd known how and um, you know all of a sudden I met a real father and um, you know a man who loved his children and had patience and and um, you know just sort of uh, opened the doors to love mm. and and uh, a form of discipline that wasn't about mm. you know mm. <laughs> punching kicking scratching or mm. whatever uh, so that you know that and it, it also gave me the, the trust to be able to just after you know after a while of breaking breaking that little warrior down that mm. confused warrior, um, breaking him down just mm. to sit back and be a child and mm. uh, you know it actually mm. took quite mm. I, I sort of took advantage of that right mm. into my mm. early twenties really of mm. being a child. But well, that, <laughs> um, that confused warrior went on um, many years later to win the uh, Lexus Song Quest. We'll talk yep. about that coming up. Great. Tonight, my guest on chat room is opera singer Philip Rhodes. More in a moment. Welcome back to Chatham. Okay, Philip, so we've talked about the fact that you were fostered by the wonderful Pam and Hanari O'Keefe. Obviously, Hanari is musical, his late brother Ben, extremely mm. musical. So, how did or when did you find this love of music? I think I always mm. had it. You know, mm. when I was a, a, a little boy, even before we were fostered, I used to, um, you know, I always had the, a little alarm clock. That was the one thing I had. And I used to, um, you know, f flick that on and listen to, to all sorts of different types mm. of music. But um, the idea of performing mm. music wasn't put into my head that, you, you know, any person can actually do that wasn't put into my head until we went into to foster care. And and I remember my father, oh, Hienare was mm. uh, retiring, mm. hanging up his boots from uh, Premier Rugby. rugby. <laughs> and um, he had his teammates over to celebrate in the, in the family home and he had the the, gu the guitar out and he started singing The Impossible Dream mm -hmm. and uh, you know I remember thinking that was just so amazing and you know still even now when I sing that song sometimes the, the emotions well yes. up to, you know mm. I remember thinking there and then I wish I could do that yes you know and mm. um, 
they created opportunities for all of us to find in many different sort of uh, avenues of life. That's, mm. that's what they highlighted to us. You know, there's singing, there's sports, there's drama, there's, you know, you can be a doctor or lawyer, all these things that, you know, growing up before being fostered, you didn't know you could do. It was definitely a home from what I can gather where basically you were being told whatever you want to be, you can be, yeah. and, and we will we'll love you through that. But when for you did the connection happen with opera? Uh, it wasn't until I went to, mm. to drama school at EIT, um, and uh, Jill Tobin was a, a voice teacher there, and um, she suggested that I sing a, uh, an Italian song called Torna Suriento, which, uh, you know, I thought, I thought at the time that could be quite good. Um, could be a young Casanova maybe running around <laughs> singing Italian songs for the girls. Yes, <laughs> uh, always works. It didn't pan out. So we <laughs> 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 but um, no, it, it opened the door to, mm. to the next sort of uh, world. And, and, you know, I needed a, quite a lot of work then. And, uh, but, you know, just mm. broadened my horizons to mm. some, something else. Because you always talk very fondly of, of the wonderful support you've had from Hawke's Bay. You know, another great person in your life was the incredible, you know, head of drama from Havelock North High School, mm. you know, Ken Keyes, who I think rechanneled your energies, yeah. shall we say, into drama. Patrick Power at yeah. EIT. You've been well supported, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I've had, uh, it's a strange thing. I, th I think maybe uh, it's the way that the good Lord has balanced things up, mm. you know, that I had uh, uh, a very confused and mm. lost father. Um, and then, you know, later in my life, been balanced up mm. by all these wonderful men in, in leadership and um, uh, maybe even just the knowledge that these men are out there um, mm. was enough that, uh, you know, Ken mm. Keyes, when I was mm. at high school, you know, got me involved in the uh, uh, theatre sports mm. group, you know, improvisational group. And, uh, you know, I met other like-minded people that I wouldn't mm. have otherwise sort of uh, wanted to expose mm. myself to. Um, and, and that led into, you know, oh, come on down to the to the Shakespeare and, and, you know, get that under your belt and see how you get on to winning a prize and, mm. and having confidence in, yes. in something and being being good at something, you know, mm. and uh, that, mm. that was uh, a real mm. big turning point. I think a little more than just good at something. In 2004, you were emerging artist with the New Zealand Opera. 2005 won the prestigious New Zealand ARIA competition. And then 2007, the really significant... Lexus Songquest, formerly known as the Mobile Songquest. Now, is this the one that drew you to Dame Kitty's attention? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So I had met Kitty um, probably six months earlier, and uh, she made a, a beeline straight for, for Patrick, really, uh, singing mm. there, and Patrick was there uh, supporting. And she said, what's he doing? Where's he going? Is he a good worker? You know, all the questions that she asks of, mm. of everyone, really. And Patrick, She's huge on work ethic, isn't she? She's big on work mm. ethic, and... Um, you know, she's she's got a track record that suggests that, that maybe that's the way to go. They have mm. a good work ethic and uh, you'll go places. So uh, th that was the first sort of interaction and she, she encouraged to uh, encouraged me to keep going and that she'd watch out mm. for what happens in the up-and-coming Lexus uh, song quest. Um, things went well there and uh, within 24 hours the phone rang to say, we want you to fly to, to Melbourne wow. and audition for Dennis O'Neill mm. for, uh, for his academy mm. in Cardiff. And, uh, you know, I was still sort of thinking, Kiri, who? Yeah. Really? Who mm. is this on the phone? Mm. Um, but, you uh, know, she, she was dead mm. serious and she got me in, in front of Dennis O'Neill, who, who then offered me mm. a scholarship in Cardiff mm. and, and, you know, really sort of worked me to the mm. bone. Because she, Kelly of course has a foundation where she supports, you know, young, maybe a lot of people don't know this, you know, she definitely gives back. Yeah, And absolutely. she has this foundation. And from what I've gathered, she's actually quite hands on, isn't she? It's absolutely. not just her people doing absolutely. it, she does it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. No, Kerry, uh, sh she has my number and she'll call mm. me at six in the morning and say, uh, you know, right, you're coming down this weekend, we've got uh, Hagen Hagegaard mm. or, or mm. you know, some of the best singers in the world, we're getting them over this weekend and you're going to work with them. And, mm. you know, and when she says work, it really is mm. work. Sort of seven hours of being mm. locked in a room with a, with a coach or a, mm. or a singing teacher. And, and, you know, she does do that and she sits in there and, and learns as well. You know. well, well, Dame Kitty, I, I gather, doesn't suffer fools gladly. No. But if she believes in you, she gives you 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, nothing but but good things to say about Kerry. Um, she's been a, a huge uh, 
uh, I don't want to say supporter, I'd rather say pusher. Yes. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, she's really been pushing me to, to not only work hard, but pushing me in front of the right mm -hmm. people and, um, mm -hmm. and just uh, you know, creating opportunities that, um, well, they've panned out in, in yes. work now. Mm -hmm. so. So, of course, Dame Kitty won the Lexa Song Quest herself in 1966, Dame Malvina in 1965. Yeah. Now, what I found really interesting when I was researching for talking to you, Dame Kitty at that time was actually known more as a popular singer and a club singer. Right, yeah. Now, to see her today, you couldn't even imagine that, could you? <laughs> Kitty singing a pop song. Well, I, mm. like I said, I have the luxury of being with her have for, uh, for a lot of time, mm. so I've heard her sing uh, Dance With My Father again. And, and really? you know, the the point, the point is that she has a magnificent voice, and actually, no matter what she sings, mm. it's just, it's, it's, it's mm. beautiful. So yes. uh, you know, dance with my father again. How she survives it without crying, I don't know. Oh, because that's no one of course in the, the room, wonderful Luther, Luther Vandross that's right. classic. Have that's you sung right. it? No, I couldn't sing it. Oh, I couldn't sing it. It's just so heart-melting heart mm. that I couldn't yes. get through it. Yes, <laughs> I even struggle watching it on YouTube. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. So it's, um, you know. Mm. And and I did I did know about mm. Kerry's sort of uh, mm. early career and uh, travelling mm. around New Zealand, sort of you know selling out mm -hmm. selling out halls and but uh, you know she, we talk about crossover mm. artists yes. now. Mm. It's a it's a funny term because it suggests that you do one thing and do the other. Actually, Kerry just sings beautifully, mm. no matter what it is. And mm. I think. Uh, I think that's the point. If you sing well, mm. you could probably sing mm. anything. Well, another one who's just done that actually is a very young opera singer, Elizabeth Marvelly, right. who now has just released a, a pop song. And I think that's fantastic that she's just experimenting with another genre. Right. Yes, right. I think that's great. Oh, brilliant. Mm. Yeah. Maybe we'll see one from you in the next few years, but we've still got more <laughs> opera to talk about. We'll hear more from Philip in our next break. Welcome back to Chatroom. Well, Philip, before the break, as well as talking about Dame Kitty, you were talking about the fact that you were awarded a scholarship to, to go and study with the incredible Dennis yeah. O'Neill in, in um, Cardiff. Yeah. That's finished now? Yeah, no, I still, I, yeah, the course mm, is finished, yes. but I still uh, work with, mm. uh, with mm. Dennis O'Neill and, um, you know, he's a fantastic teacher. Uh, he's been wonderful for me and not only for me, actually, a lot of New Zealanders mm. now are flooding there. I, I feel like in... Uh, can uh, take uh, the honours of opening mm -hmm. the door really for mm -hmm. uh, for New Zealanders mm -hmm. and and really a little bit of uh, I have to attribute Kiri's push to, for me mm -hmm. to work hard as well and and all of the people that supported me actually you know it takes mm -hmm. quite a it, like they say it takes a village to raise a mm -hmm. child and um, you know I had a lot of support from different people mm -hmm. the Todd Foundation the Kiri Takano Foundation Dame Malvina's Foundation mm -hmm. you know they all sort of chipped in to help me get to to mm -hmm. where I need to go. But, um, you know, right now I think there's uh, four New Zealand singers there and, uh, uh, you know, the boys from Saul Emil have yes. studied there and, uh, you know, Dennis is, is sought after from, from around the world. He's, he's the man that mm. people want to get to. And he's been able to make that transition, hasn't he, from, from you know, great singer himself to, to good teacher. Yeah, mm. not, not mm. everyone does. No, Not no. everyone does. But it's like Dennis, good rugby players don't make good commentators. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But Dennis, uh, Dennis O'Neill has always mm. been studious mm. when he was learning. Um, and, and he says, you know, in his lessons that when he was younger, the voice wasn't as big a voice as many of the people that were out there. But he studied and studied and, you know, watched what people were doing and, and you know, has always had a, a mind for mm. what are they doing, the science of, you know, the science or the physics of what's going on in there. And, um, you know, he can hear with any young singer that comes in, he can hear what's going on and, and have the vocabulary to really sort of unlock ideas and uh, get the voice really sort of humming. Mm. What a gift for you to have spent this time with him. Oh, yeah. But I guess now, though, in some ways you're kind of at the business end because now you've got to be looking for placings and forward bookings and shows to come, don't you? Yeah. Is this where it gets hard or harder? Uh, well, it gets hard. It, um, it sort of comes in waves. That's the hard thing. Like, uh, you know, you'll have four jobs uh, all wanting to appear on the same day. Uh, so uh, that, that's when it gets hard to decide which, you know, which job is is more advantageous to me building a career um, and uh, which is also suitable for the for the position I'm in now you know some roles are bigger than others mm. uh, and I don't want to go out there and and uh, kill myself in the first big job I take so so it's a lot of juggling and, and that's where Kerry also you know we talked about her being hands-on um, I can easily throw that upstairs yes. to Kerry and mm. say what do you think about this opportunity um, 
you know, whether it's just this opportunity or this versus this. And, you know, she has a good pool of people around her as well to help advise and, you know, so, so I'm lucky in that sense. Because I guess the ideal would be to be based with a particular European opera company for a year or a couple of years, wouldn't it? Yeah. And, and you're doing quite a bit of work with Opera North in, yeah, that's in right. Leeds? I've yeah. been lucky. Uh, Wynne Win Davis here, at, who, who's the head of music at uh, New Zealand Opera, introduced me to the company uh, two years ago, singing uh, singing in uh, Daido and Aeneas. Um, and, uh, you know, they obviously saw that I'm keen to work and, and I'm a, a reasonable colleague. Um, so they've, they've offered me, you know, they've really kept me in milk, I suppose. Is yes. that the saying? I'm mm. not sure. <laughs> well, well, because, of course, too, now it's not just you. You have your wife, two children. Yeah. I've you know, a, so you're supporting a family. Yeah, mm. I do. I have a family to support. And, and, you know, this is a job like any other. We've, you know, I've got to pay the bills at the end of the day. But uh, I'm lucky that it's a job I love and uh, I get to mm. get to do that for a, for a living, mm. which is fantastic. Dan Kiri has always been very honest about the fact that, you know, it's a hard and demanding life. Yep. I think she also now t too talks about the toll it's taking on her knees, yep. but, but she is 70. Yep. You know, how tough is it? Yeah, you know, you've got to front up every day. Uh, there's no real sort of socialising. Uh, you put yourself in danger of, of sickness or of being mm -hmm. overtired. And, you know, when you think to yourself that uh, people have spent up to £80 pounds, uh, a ticket to come mm -hmm. here, and those are the cheapest tickets, um, it's hard-earned money, and they've come to here quality. Um, so, you, you know, you have a pressure on yourself that says you cannot let them down. Um, you know, I get upset if I spend $20 at a on a ticket to see a movie and it's poor mm. you know what, what are people when they've gone through all the dressing up and and all that you know so we do have we put that up pressure on ourselves to to do a, a really good job um, but also the fact that you know I, I don't see my I'm on the road a lot so I mm. you know the sacrifices my family have to make because I don't see them a lot and uh, you know it's a it's a really tough job in that aspect of things. How do you protect the voice? Um, well I don't wrap myself up in cotton wool but uh, you know I do carry around with me a little bottle of alcohol rub, you know, yes. so, so I'm not part touching too many germs, but, uh, you know, I'm not quite in the Michael Jackson zone of wearing a face mask everywhere. <laughs> Avoid all smokers, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Well, yep. no, I don't, you know, mm. luckily now there's uh, no smoking yes. in bars and mm. things like that. Unfortunately, mm. it means there's more smoking on the street. But, uh, mm. but you know, wrap up warm and, mm. and uh, lots of fluid and, mm. uh, you know, just, just fingers crossed, really, a lot yes. of the time. Mm. So what's next? Uh, so after this, uh, I'm, I'm back up to Auckland for a, for a month with the uh, Auckland Opera Studio, um, doing a Lucia de Lamamour up there with uh, a, a few young New Zealand Wonderful. singers, which will mm. be exciting. I always look for opportunities to come home and, mm. and do, n not only with New Zealand Opera, but if it's an exciting project with, mm. with New Zealanders mm. that uh, I already know, and I'd, I'd mm. jump at the opportunity to come home and, mm. and do something with them. So that, that's next on the list. And then... Uh, covering it, e uh, English National Opera, then back up to Opera North, and mm. uh, yeah, exciting. And and um, with a dad like Anare, you're always going to keep your feet on your ground. I think one of the things I loved that he said about or to you was at the end of the night, you know, take off the tuxedo and muck in and help everyone. Yeah, clear up. yeah, that's it. And, yeah, yeah you know. there'll be no big head here. Yeah, you know, that's <laughs> it. And uh, you know, my dad's always sort of uh, rem reminded me in his own way that uh, you know, without having to tell me, but even mm. just by watching him and his actions that, um, you know, it, everyone in life is just here for, uh, well, they're here to enjoy their life. And actually, what I've learned from my dad is one of the, one of the most important things you can do for a, for a fellow human is, is let them know that they belong here, mm. that they, you know, give them the confidence and, mm. and they belong here too. And, you know, I'll never forget that sort of mm. lesson and, uh, you know, it served me well. Yes. Yeah. Philip, lovely to meet you tonight. Thank you for Pleasure. coming in. Thank you. And um, looking forward to, to seeing and hearing you back in Hawaii.